950 watts of glorious solar power coming straight from that array into these cords right here and powering a portable 120 volt air conditioner. Did it guys, solar and a portable air conditioner slash window air conditioner, anything that runs on 120 volts. Got a cool little apparatus right here that uh, allows us to run that off the power of the sun. You've probably seen some of my uh, other videos bringing up solar power to my full size central air conditioning unit. And I can't tell you how many comments I got asking to know how to do it to like a portable unit or a window unit. Well, today is the day. So it's actually quite simple. Uh, the basic premise was, well, if I could get a 120 volt inverter, why couldn't I use a contactor to do the same thing that my big air conditioner does and just add an external one to a 120 volt air conditioner? And the answer is it's very simple and it works exceptionally well. Let me show you the details on uh, how this is built and how well it works. Quickly here before we get into it, I need to just jump in and ask those of you who leave early. And before you officially go, please do four things for me. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and share. I spend a lot of time and effort bringing this content, and I'd sure appreciate it if you'd watch the whole thing, but if you don't, just please do those four free things so that the content can continue to stay free for all of you. Those of you that watched until the end, thank you, thank you. You'll be glad you did, and you're welcome to wait to do those four things until the end. So let's just get a baseline power consumption on this 15,000 BTU portable air conditioner. I am using this power strip so that uh, I can connect both the uh, air conditioning unit as well as the solar together on the same line. Definitely do not plug your portable air conditioners or window air conditioners into a power strip. That's just asking for trouble as well. I am going to show you, though, a safer way to avoid overloading anything. And yes, I realize I'm running an air conditioner outside, but uh, this will make it easier for me to uh, show you what's going on here and uh, stuff. So I'm sure you can stretch your minds enough to picture the air conditioner inside your house and a simple cord running inside from outside. Easy enough. Most portable air conditioners are venting through a window. Most window air conditioners are sitting in a window, so you have a nice giant hole in the side of your house that you can run a cord through. All right, let's turn this on. We're going to go ahead and uh, turn it to the highest speed. And we'll just crank this down. All right, we're going to let that uh, settle out. It's uh, getting nice and cool here, and uh, we'll show you the power consumption. All right, the air conditioner's been running here for a minute, and if you look here, you can see that uh, we're settling in at about 1250-ish watts, we'll call it, okay? And again, that is 100% being pulled from the grid. So now, we're going to take the plug from the solar. We're going to go ahead and uh, plug it into this power strip. I've got uh, this box uh, set up uh, to shade uh, the microinverter because it gets uh, quite hot. But uh, the microinverter we're using, this is a 120 volt microinverter from EcoFlow actually, and uh, it's their stream microinverter. And check this out, much like some of the big uh, 240 volt inverters I've played with, this has four inputs on it. So I've been able to connect four 370 watt bifacial panels. Check out these nice stands right here. Got these here on the front, and then these on the back uh, right here that uh, telescope and uh, pivot up here as well, so you can really dial in your angles. Anyway, I've got links for these uh, down in the description, and maybe I'll even leave a link to the video, uh, the full video review of them. They're from Powered Portable Solar. They're fantastic stands. I love them. Because you can uh, deploy a solar array semi-permanently with this, or temporarily. It's super slick. Now I've had a really hard time finding a good high quality 120 volt microinverter. It doesn't overheat even though it gets very, very hot and it's got totally epic app control and got all the good certifications and stuff. Unfortunately, at the time I'm making this video, it's only available for purchase if you live in the state of Utah. I'll still leave a link for it down in the description because maybe that's uh, changed. Let me show you what it can do though. So we're just waiting on that uh, microinverter to boot up. What happens is it has a five minute time delay from when it starts seeing grid power, so the moment we plug that in, to the point that it starts generating power. As we look here, we're still 1250-ish watts being consumed. So all the power is being consumed from the grid at the moment. So the microinverter just booted up. Check it out. On the app here, we can see that it's producing about 950 watts of power. So now that, that is booted up, if uh, we come down here and we look at uh, the power being drawn from the grid, only 336 watts is being drawn from the grid. 
So the vast majority of this uh, portable air conditioning unit is now running off the solar power being generated by those solar panels. Okay, that's all well and fine, but uh, if you don't have a grid tie agreement and the compressor that uh, consumes the majority of the power from this air conditioning unit turns off, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to stop consuming the power and so the power is actually going to backfeed and go into your house. It's a big problem. In fact, allow me to demonstrate. Let's pretend that it got up to temperature. I'm going to change it to fan mode. So we've still got the fan going, but the compressor stopped, okay? Well, when the compressor stops, check it out. We are now back feeding over 830 watts into the house. And like I said, that can be very dangerous for fire. That could be problematic in terms of where you live because it may be illegal to back feed into the power grid. So there's an easy way to fix all of this. Okay, for less than 30 bucks, you can build a very simple contraption like this. And it may look like there's a gazillion wires, but it's actually very simple. Let me show you. This Mayo plug plugs into your standard outlet, the grid power. We'll talk about what's happening here soon. But uh, the power feeds out of this port right here, and you can see this is just a female end. This is your load port. This is where you'll plug your portable air conditioner into. And then this third plug right here is once again a female plug, and that is where your solar inverter will plug into. So what happens is grid power comes in here, and we've got two components right here. We have a current sensing switch right here. And then we have a simple relay with a 120 volt coil. So what happens? The wires from the grid, they come in here and they connect to this side of the contactor. And then you may or may not be able to see that the load ports, the ones that are going to feed the air conditioner, are also tapped on the same side of the contactor. So actually, grid power comes in and immediately goes back out. There's no way to shut the grid power off. So you will always have grid power available at that plug. Well, notice on the uh, hot wire for the load, I've got this current sensing switch. That wire goes through that little hole and it senses the current. I've programmed this and you can program this switch very easily to close or turn on when it detects a minimum of 1200 watts, which is what the microinverter is rated for at its max. So then what happens is when that detects that amount of power flowing through the load wire, this closes and that energizes this large switch here and it turns the switch on. That allows the solar that's going to be plugged into that to quote unquote see the grid power on this side of the contactor is going to allow the solar to boot up and then it will start powering the load right here. Now the nice thing is, as soon as say the compressor on the air conditioner turns off, this will notice that decrease in power and it will open, opening this switch, which will then disconnect the solar. So that way you have no chance of back feeding power back at all. And it will wait until the compressor turns back on this will close again, energizing that, and it will allow the solar power after a brief delay for it to sync up to continue to run your load. However, your load will never stop working because it will always be able to draw power from the grid. The only thing that doesn't run all the time is the solar so that you don't run the risk of backfeeding anything. I've simply wired the neutrals to the same side of the contactor and the hots to the same side of the contactor. That way I get disconnect on both the hot and the neutral. And then obviously I've got all the grounds just tied together with this little uh, Wago connector. Then I've got uh, one wire right here that's coming up and energizing one side of the contactor. And then the other side of the contactor uh, comes over here and runs through this switch and then plugs into the hot side. The other benefit of this is now we're also isolating the, the solar and the loads from everything else in the circuit, right? Because the solar is going to disconnect when this load drops below the threshold that we've programmed on this switch. You will not run the risk of sending a huge amount of solar back into your house wiring and potentially having a fire issue. So let me simply hook this up and show you how it works. And guys, I do have to issue a disclaimer here. This is for entertainment purposes only. You should not attempt this because I am not a licensed electrician, but I'm not uh, certified or anything 
So enjoy the entertainment, but be sure and involve the help of a licensed professional. All right, so we've got a little uh, switch gear here. Uh, this is my solar plug. So I'm going to go ahead, plug up the solar. Now nothing's gonna happen because I don't have the grid plugged in. And I'd recommend plugging in your solar and your load before you connect the grid power because then you won't have any live wires to deal with until you're ready. Next, we're gonna plug up the air conditioner just like that on the load. So you can see that the air conditioner one is coming off the main side of the contactor and then the lone one coming off that other side is going to the solar. So next we're gonna simply plug up the grid uh, to this. We'll keep the watt meter in place so we can look at that. The solar is not seeing the grid at all though yet because this relay has yet to close. I'm gonna put my microphone down here by this switch so you can hear it when it closes. It's gonna make a click. All right, we're turning it on. When the air conditioner turned on, did you hear that click? That's because the air conditioner is pulling enough current that uh, it's closed this switch and now the solar will be able to boot up. It'll take about five minutes, so let's go ahead and let that run. We're actually gonna start a stopwatch just so we can see exactly how long it takes. And you can see currently, while we're on delay, we're pulling back at our 1250-ish watts from the grid. So almost exactly five minutes. You can now see that our grid consumption has dropped to 350-ish watts again. So now the solar is producing the vast majority of power that the air conditioner is consuming again. So now what I'm going to do is place my microphone down here again. I'm gonna turn the AC unit back to fan mode. You're going to hear it click and we're going to see that the solar gets disconnected. Go ahead and put you there. So did you hear that click? So when the compressor turned off, that immediately disconnected the solar. And look, now we're only pulling 97 watts from the grid because that's all the fan is using because the air conditioner compressor turned off. And that's sweet. So then when the air conditioner compressor turns back on, five minutes after that, the solar is going to kick on again and offset uh, the consumption of this. Now, if it's not obvious, the more efficient way to do this would be to during the peak sunlight hours of the day, crank the AC, right? And really make it run, hopefully not as non-stop as possible. So that way your solar can offset the maximum amount of power that's using. And then hopefully it uh, cools off enough uh, during the day, which is the time that you most need the air conditioning, right? That uh, at night, uh, maybe you could uh, then turn it off for an extended period of time. The other nice thing about the EcoFlow inverter is you are able to, in the app, uh, change how much power it outputs. So you can limit its output. You don't have to do the full 1200 watts that it's rated for like I'm doing right now. All right guys, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. You guys always have so many great ideas and thoughts. I love hearing them. Please be sure and do four things for me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Those are four 100% free things for you to do but really benefits the channel. I'm not giving up on uh, this stuff. I'm gonna always try to bring more free and innovative content to you that uh, hopefully makes you more self-sufficient and saves you money. And those four free things are the only things I really ask for in return. So many things are getting stuck behind paywalls and stuff, and I really wanna keep bringing you free content. So if you do those four th free things in exchange for the free content, I would sure appreciate it a lot. All right, we'll catch y'all next time.